Hello everybody and welcome to my 2021 self-tape setup. Things have changed a little bit since my how to self-tape on any budget video and I want to go over those changes with you today. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so first of all, this is a sequel video to my how to self-tape on any budget video. So if you have any questions about like what tripod I'm using, what lights I'm using, microphone, my backdrops here, it's all in that video. I will talk to you like you've seen that video. Today we're talking about lighting changes, microphone changes, color correction, and shooting settings. So again, a little bit more advanced stuff. I'm already gonna assume that you have a self-tape setup at this point. So there are three key differences this year. First of which is I'm using a boom mic. Now this is super important because it gets the sound a lot better on those self tapes. It's actually, the mic is like, honestly about six inches above my head. You won't see it in the frame, but the sound quality is amazing. Hi, my name is Will Westwater. I'm six feet tall. I'm based out of Los Angeles, California, which is where I am currently. And I'm reading for the role of Now, another thing that I've changed is I've started using my big fancy camera. Every single time, I use a 24 to 105 millimeter lens. That way we can zoom in for all those full body slates and then get into a nice tighter shot. Because I know some of you guys have asked me questions about what kind of lenses I'm using. So again, variable zoom, very important. And another thing is I'm shooting flat and that's something you don't need a fancy camera to do. All right, so let me stop you right there past Will. What is shooting flat? Shooting flat means you're removing added contrast and sharpness that is there by default on your camera, usually in your camera's just auto setting. Shooting flat allows you more freedom to edit your footage in post so that you can get it exactly how you want it to look. There are tutorials for every type of camera, including smartphones, on how to shoot flat. In fact, my Canon 1DX Mark II doesn't specifically have a flat setting, but you can mimic flat settings in your custom user settings. So long story short, you're just gonna have to do some Googling, you know learn about whatever camera you're using. It's part of the job. As for other camera settings, I shoot my self tapes at 23.98 or 24 frames per second with the shutter speed set at 50. This is also doable on a smartphone. Just go into your camera settings and see what kind of options you have. Most TV shows and movies are shot at 23.98 frames per second and my iPhone defaults to 30 frames per second, which is fine, but it doesn't give off the same cinematic vibe and fortunately, you can change it. It's also important that you turn on compatibility mode if you're shooting on an iPhone. The file sizes will be bigger, but it will be an H.264 MOV file, which is compatible with all computers, both Mac and PC. This is important for submitting your video files to casting directors and agents and it's essential to shoot in compatibility mode if you edit your iPhone videos on a PC. Got it? Good, moving on. The last final little thing that I'm doing differently is I'm just using one light this year. My other self-tape setup, I felt like I was using like another light over here, another light over here. I was using four lights. You don't need that. I've actually found I get better color if I put one light just a little bit farther away. So this is just a reminder to keep playing with that self-tape setup. But anyway, let's get into actually color correcting a little bit of a video because that is the next part of how to make your self tape look even more cinematic. So let's get over to the computer. Before you color correct, I highly recommend looking up tutorials on how to color correct for your specific skin tone and your editing software. For me, it helped a lot to watch Maddie Hippoja's color correction tutorial, which is linked below. I learned a ton from this video and I'm telling you a little goes a long way. All right, so here's my footage in flat. After I put my title card and the edits of the slate and the scene, I put an adjustment layer on top of my footage. This way I don't have to color correct individual clips, rather I can just adjust all of them at once. In order, I start with the exposure and tweak it to make sure I'm well lit but not blown out. Then I go through my highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks, keeping an eye on the Lumetri scopes and the look of my edits. After the lighting is done, we move on to color. Because I shoot flat, I have to up the contrast and the saturation so it doesn't look dull. Then after that, I go into color specific tweaks. For me, I'm often quite red in the face and the hue versus hue adjustment is perfect for that. Using the eyedropper tool, I sample a piece of my red face and adjust along the hue to a more natural color. A little goes a long way, folks. Once that's done, I export to H.264 using a bit rate of about 20 megabytes per second and I'm good to go. A better looking self tape done in minutes. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and feel free to follow me on Instagram if that's something that you're into. Your self tape will evolve 
through time. So just keep messing around with it, try new things, and you just might be surprised at what you find. I hope this helps. Break legs.